Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the Vaults Your Master. Today, we're going to continue our deep dive talking about 10 strategies that you can use as a game master in order to solve this problem of player disengagement. Uh, in today's strategy, number 7 out of 10 is designed to take on the most insidious and nasty of all types of disengagement players can have with your game. That has nothing to do necessarily with boredom or a bad story, but it has to do with the players and the characters themselves. They are dismissive of your story. They are arrogant. Their characters are so good, so powerful, so overpowered that nothing that you've thrown at them has even scratched their armor. Right? It doesn't matter the CR. They laugh and they take it down in a in two rounds at most. So if you've been playing the game long enough, especially if you're at higher levels, you've run into this. And it can be infuriating, right? And a lot of the DMs out there, GMs are complaining about this. Well, the CR system's broken and and we can't get monsters that are powerful enough. And we, you know, all I do is add more hit points and it just turns into a, a big old punching bag anyway. It just drags it on for no no purpose well instead of trying to figure out ways to challenge the players with just more hit points and and a higher to hit roll and more damage that this creature deals why don't you hit these characters where it really hurts and challenge them emotionally that my friends is what this particular strategy is going to talk about and before i say what exactly how it works we're going to give you a little example of something in my own game real quick so the idea here is that we are going to challenge our characters emotionally so that they are forced to evolve and change and adapt to the game not because there's a bigger tougher monster out there but because the challenge in front of them is one that they don't necessarily have the tools to overcome. But once they manage it, once they figure it out, their character has changed. And that's really what I think a lot of characters and players want. They want their, their, their characters to get challenged so that they can grow and become better, can become more powerful, might be the way they think about it. But I think deep down, it's just they want their character to evolve so let me give you the the quick example from my current game here's a juicy tidbit that i sent out to my players through discord i have a game coming up on thursday this week and i sent out this message to that group of players i said hey i'm putting together a convergence diagram for your party and could each of you share what your character's immediate concerns are uh, what are their goals? What are their questions? Because they've just opened up this secret chamber at the end of last session that that the, you know the, the the statue slides aside and they see you know this dark you know corridor before them. What's in there? What's down there? What's back there? I don't know. That's what they're going to find out today. So I asked them, hey, what's on your character's mind? What do they want to know? What do they want to find? What do they what do they think's down there? What do they think's inside? What's What's beyond? I'm trying to, you know, gauge their 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 pulse a little bit, right? Take their pulse, try to figure out where their heads are at. Because maybe they give me some ideas for this session, actually, right? But here's what happened. One of my players responded, Marley. She's running a druid by the name of Elandria. She's one of my Morshael, uh, which actually no, she is a she's one of the one of the uh, spite spawn. Uh Anyway, her response was pretty straightforward. She said, hey, uh, my character wants to get the scale, which was the, the object of their, their quest here, the goal. There's this dragon scale that's, you know, the shape of a, a shield. And it's in this, this temple, this uh, shrine, which actually turned out to be a crypt, a mausoleum. Uh, and then they want to focus on the adventure and safely return, right? They want to get in there get the scale, go back, everybody's safe. And then depending on what they find, maybe they'll come back later, right? And then I asked, huh, because now my, now my, my uh, 
my GM juices start to flow because I'm starting to wonder something. Well, what would your character do, I asked her, if somebody doesn't make it back? Because you're looking for a safe return. You know, where's your headspace with that? And then I follow that up with, or is Alandria just focused on her own safe return? Maybe she doesn't care. Because I want to know something here. Who is on Alandria's mind? Is it herself or is it her party? Because if I want to challenge this character, this is giving me some ideas. What do they care about? Because if I know what the character cares about, I can put that in jeopardy. And if I put that in jeopardy, I can challenge them. It has nothing to do with hit points. It has nothing to do with armor class, to hit rolls, or anything else. I just need to threaten something that they care about. And they tell me they want to have a safe return. Safe return for whom is what I want to know. So then her response, Marley is like, well, uh, she would try to bring them back. So that tells me everything this evil, sadistic GM needs to know. This character cares about her teammates. <laughs> okay, because now my evil juices are starting to, to bubble up right now. And I ask you, GMs, DMs, keepers out there, what would you do with this juicy little tidbit? Go ahead and put it in the comments uh, down below in this video and like and subscribe while you're down there. Uh, and let me tell you what I'm thinking. What if she is faced with a scenario where she can't bring everybody back? What if there's more than one? Not necessarily, And I don't have to kill anybody here, right? I just need to put them in danger. And then here's the other thing. I don't even need to put a PC in danger. What if uh, it's just an NPC that they care about? What if it's somebody from their backstory? Somebody from their life? Somebody they're supposed to be protecting? What if it's that kind of a person? And there's not just one. Maybe there's two. And Alandria, she's not a strong uh, character. I think strength was her dump stat. Uh, and so, Alandria, what if you have two two unconscious or two bodies or whatever you got to take back, but you can only carry one? Which one would it be? Or maybe one is your ally and one is an important NPC you're supposed to be rescuing. Which one? You see what I can do here? I can take that character and challenge the bejesus out of them without even doing anything to that character. I don't need to throw an even bigger dragon at them. More hit points, more damage. No, I just need to make them make a choice. And I know this now because they told me. This is the important thing, ladies and gents, as far as getting information from your players about their characters. Because the more you know, the more you can mess with them. And that's what it's all about, right? So today's strategy is this. We want to force evolution upon our characters through challenges. This is really what I think these players who are that kind of cocky, arrogant, dismissive of everything because they're so powerful and they're so good and their teamwork is so awesome and they've got all the best loot and gear. And you couldn't possibly harm them. Huh, I don't have to, right? I just need to challenge them some way, shape, or form, get them emotionally challenged because now I can, I can break them if they don't, if they don't respond correctly, right? I'm going to force them to do something that they don't want to do. So this is what we're talking about. We're talking about using the plot as a crucible. Okay. And we're going to, we're going to get player growth because this is what I think these characters, these players want. They want their, their, their character to, to grow. That's what they really want. They're substituting in the idea of loot as growth. They're substituting in the idea of um, more items, magic, uh, more spells, more feats as growth. No, it's not. If there's a character that has a story, growth is there's an arc, right? The beginning, the middle, and the end. And you're going through this arc. Force the movement through the arc as a crucible challenge. So as the plot is unfolding, you throw these challenges at the characters that don't necessarily have to target DCs and ACs, but just target their characters' wants and needs, their hopes and dreams, their strengths and weaknesses. Throw them into the fire and see what happens because they're going to have to grow or they're going to fail. 
And you don't have to kill anybody. You don't have to TPK anybody. See what happens when they fail a quest. I'll tell you, they'll be probably more mad than if their character died, right? Because their character died, I got another character, I made another character. But when they fail at a quest they were supposed to do, they didn't protect somebody, let's say, now you got them. They are going to be upset. All right, so hey, why are we doing this? Well, it's a real simple idea. All right, so the rationale here is that your character's personal journeys need to be influenced by the campaign's events. And what you're looking for by using this strategy is the responses to these challenges, because that's where the growth is going to come in. That's where the character is going to develop that respect for your game, for your plot. That's how they're going to have this deeper connection to the story. It has nothing to do with big, bad monsters and super evil traps, right? Instead, the challenges, the changes that they have to overcome and, and endure are the ones that get that emotional challenge that emotional response causing the player to grow the character to grow that's not do gear all right so let's get into how you can do this or at where you can apply this etc so application dynamic characters characters need to undergo change throughout the story end of story that's what has to happen uh it's they need to be transformed in response to the trials they face otherwise what was the point they start at level one as some druid, uh, you know, spite spawn uh, who has elemental power and they end the game at level 20 as a spite spawn druid with elemental power. Yay, they've got more spells, they got more feats, they got more gear, but nothing ever happened. They slayed a thousand creatures, but nothing ever happened to them. They were never forced to change. They were never forced to grow. They were never forced to go through their arc. And yeah, I am using the word force because a lot of, you know, I mean, you're in charge of the game, right? A character's not going to go, well, my character, my player, need, or a player's not going to say my character's going to change for the chain, you know, sake of change. There needs to be something thrown at them to force the change, to make them change, to make them go through their arc. Okay, so move beyond just these static character traits and show how the experiences these characters have shape and redefine them. And it's going to make them more real. It's going to make the game more real. It's going to make everything relatable, this portrayal of them, because it's a real situation, right? We as people, humans, we undergo change. We're, we're, we're threatened and we have, you know, strife and a crucible that we have to go through. Same thing with these characters. Put the screws to them is what I've, you, I've said this before if you've seen my earlier videos. All right, let's continue. Where else can you apply this stuff? Uh, narrative integration. Your character development should be intricately linked to the plot events. So the plot is going to go as the plot's going to go. You're going to go A, B, C, D, right, through your plot. But your characters and their development, their growth should also be tied to that plot. So the plot is moving and the characters should be evolving along with the plot. Okay, if the characters just remain static they're bored especially if they've gotten so powerful that they can kind of exist outside of the plot okay so the challenges encountered by the character shouldn't just be these obstacles that they overcome some creature they got to slay it should be an opportunity to growth so start thinking about this as you're putting a session together as you're putting a a, um, a challenge together don't just necessarily go well, what stat block do i need for this creature right instead start thinking about how is this going to force that character to grow or characters to grow? How can I push them? How can I conf make them confront their flaws, their fears, their desires, perhaps forbidden desires, things they shouldn't do? Having those, those, those morally ambiguous choices they need to make. Okay, that's the funnest part, at least in my opinion, is when you have your, your players going, I'm not sure if I'm the good guy or the bad guy here. Like, should I be doing this? Those are great moments. All right, implementation. How are you going to go about doing this? Well, the campaign's events and challenges are catalysts for, the, for this character growth. So look at them that way. And they're going to be ensuring your characters are dynamic and evolving. So it shouldn't be the same character at the start of the campaign that's there at the end of the campaign. Okay, any story you watch, you know, movie, you read a book, whatever, 
characters change throughout the arc. At least good good stories do this. Okay, the same same character's not there at the end of the story. They've been transformed somehow. So is that what you're doing in your game or not? Because if you're not doing this, if you're not challenging those players, especially those high level cocky ones, right? The ones that are that you can't hurt me. Okay, if you're not challenging them, they're gonna get bored. Right, I would be, because uh, if you walk into a game as a player, you know you're going to kill everything that the, the the GM puts in front of you within you know two swings. Then what's the point? You get so bored. Uh, banish, 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 and it's gone. That's D and D, by the way. Pathfinder is not as simple as that. So kudos to uh, Paizo, but it's still true. I mean, you still have. I got plus twenty to hit, so I'm going to hit something guaranteed. So that's what we're talking about here. So we need to come up with different types of challenges. This is what this what we're talking about for this strategy. So identify your growth opportunities for these characters. Uh, key moments in the plot can serve as pivotal points for character development. So go back to my little juicy tidbit here. Where's my juicy tidbit? This, I wasn't planning this, but when the player gave me this information, now I'm thinking, ooh, Thursday. Is there something that could be down that secret corridor that might lead to this challenge of somebody not making it back. Hmm, right? I'm keeping my eye out for that now. So that's what I'm talking about here. Identifying growth opportunities. Look for these key moments. And then I plan the conflict and the challenge that directly relates to the character's weakness. So I'll, I don't know a ton about Elantra's character yet. Uh, it's still kind of a newish character. The game's still new. This is our seventh session we're into and I've only had Alandria there for, of the previous six, she's been there four or five because Marley had missed one of the games. Um, so I don't know a ton about this character yet. And I haven't gotten a ton of backstory yet from the character, other than I know some generic stuff. There is a little bit of a deep secret I also know, but maybe I could leverage that as I start to think about it because... Alandre has a sibling that is in game as a disappeared NPC. So I might maybe I could do something with that. That's not a it's not a bad idea. So anyway, conflict challenge directly relate to character weaknesses, goals, background. I know some stuff about Alandre, I just don't know a ton, but maybe I can use this the sibling angle. And it's going to prompt them to make a difficult decision. So maybe within this secret uh, chamber, there's something about the, this sibling who Elantra really doesn't even know exists. I mean, she, the player, knows this, but the character doesn't know this. So maybe there's something in there that reveals this. And now the character maybe has to decide, should I, should I do something about this information or save somebody's life over here, right? I mean... You know, maybe the place is on fire and the information that has the stuff about this this unknown sibling is suddenly there. But, you know, the smoke inhalation and one of her friends is, colla you know, collapsing. Do I save them or do I save the burning book over here, the scroll? Dun, dun, dun. What are you going to do? All right. Again, I didn't have to lay a glove on this character to really challenge him with something like that. Feedback loops is the other way to implement this. Uh, character actions and plot developments are inextricably linked. Characters' decisions have tangible impacts on the story, so which in turn presents new challenges that spur further growth, creating this dynamic interplay between the character and the plot. So in other words, the character does something that affects the story, and then the story moves, which then kicks something to affect that character in return. So it's this constant feedback. You push this way, it pushes back. Back and forth, back and forth, a loop of just repeating synergy between character actions and story plot over and over again. So design your quests and encounters in that, that concept where you know the characters are going and slay the beast or whatever it is because they got their plus 30 to hit. Right? Great. But when you do that, that's going to trigger something that affects the characters who then have to act in order to deal with it, which then triggers something to affect the characters. Right? So the more they do, the more happens to them. All right? We could do stuff like this. And again, I started devious thinking. So maybe there's something with a sibling now that 
if my character uh, or my player's character Landry does something, maybe there's something, some ghost in, down in this hallway or whatever. And maybe if they slay it, it causes some repercussion down the line that causes psychic pain to the sibling who is a twin of the Landry character and causes her psychic pain. I mean, whatever. I can come up with some crazy stuff like that and really start to mess with that character. It's fun. It's devious, right? It's it's sadistic, and you're gonna you're gonna get these players second guessing everything, right? That's the beauty of it. Awesome. All right. So as far as an actual in game um, event, I had one planned here. I was gonna talk about an unlikely alliance between uh, my Tuesday players, but I'm not gonna talk about this one because I just talked about the Elandria situation. I think that's more more interesting relevant not that this is lame or boring but it's just we've kind of heard about nesni and the other group on tuesday i haven't talked much about my thursday crew so i'm going to kind of maybe leave this example for for a different time and instead let's get into wrapping this up let's talk about the takeaways of this discussion of this strategy here so this this idea of the plots of crucible and you're you're going to get your players to evolve by challenging them and the challenges you're throwing at them don't necessarily have to do anything with uh you know physical might damage or whatever so what are we saying character growth is a central element of your story okay each plot event that you're planning should contribute to player arcs to their characters arcs so as the story moves forward the characters are moving forward as the characters evolve and develop so does the so does the plot adversity and decision making shape the character's journey okay so they have adversity something bad happens doesn't have to do with damage to the character right it could be some emotional damage some psychological adversity something they have to make a desperate choice and the decision shapes their journey. And then your character's transformations are going to be tied to these events as they unfold. Events of their own making, by the way. Because if you do this right, the things your characters do that are going to lead to a successful, you know, uh, overcoming or successful completion of a quest, then trigger something else which is deleterious to the characters. And it's this feedback, right? Uh, the narrative reflects the complexities of change and growth. So your character's development and the plot's progression are mutually reinforcing. They're feeding back on one another. So characters develop, plot progresses. Plot progresses, characters have to develop over and over and over, and they're rolling with each other. And characters should emerge from your campaign at level whatever you're going to changed by the experience if you're care this is why uh, some of these players get so cocky is because their characters never change right they just get more power and they just slay more monsters but they've never been forced to change force them to change put the screws to them find out what they're weak to find out what they want find out what their hopes and dreams are and crush them right that's what you're doing as the, the evil GM out there. You're going to put the screws to these characters and see what they do. Okay? You want to cast Banish? Great. Well, maybe the creature you just banished uh, is possessing your mother's body and you just banished them to hell. Good job. And then when the creature returns to banishment, the mother's body's missing. <laughs> Have fun. Banish another one while you're at it. All right, or you banish me and the soul of some relative of yours is going to get tortured when I go there because I've actually been summoned here to this material plane where I was torturing your relative in hell just six months ago, but then I got summoned here and I've been trapped here. I've been locked here. Oh, you're going to banish me? Thank you. I'm going to go back and torture Uncle Tom, Uncle Freddy, Uncle Joey, Uncle whoever. All right. I think that's it. I think that covers all the stuff I wanted to talk about. Hopefully that was interesting. Hopefully that was useful. And I just got a lot of stuff rolling in my brain now. So you have to have to excuse me because I'm devious plots are afoot now, ladies and gents. Lots of things I'm starting to think about. <laughs>
anyway, that's kind of the fun of making these videos. It gets me to, inspires me to start thinking about some more things as well for my own game. All right, hopefully that was useful. Hopefully that was interesting for you. If it was, you like the vid, right? You subscribe to the channel. You you notify yourself. Throw some comments down in the, the comment box below. Give me your thoughts on this. Is this too sick? Am I just evil and sadistic? Or is this what those arrogant player characters deserve, right? How dare you dismiss my plot? I'll show you. All right, have a good night. Peace out.